answer a couple of questions just for uh, informational purposes that uh, I was presented with. So within these few minutes, I like to entertain these two questions. The questions that were presented to me was, why do you hate God? And I guess the second question sort of interrelates, why do you hate? <laughs> wow. Why do you hate the nation of Islam? Mm. Okay. Let us answer these questions. First of all, to be really simple, I do not hate God. I do not hate the nation of Islam. I do not hate black Muslims. That should answer your question. However, when we answer questions, sometimes people would like a brief explanation because it sure sounds like you hate God. It sure sounds like you hate the nation of Islam, black Muslims. I was born into a Baptist Christian family. When I was a child growing up in Mississippi, I was actually taken down to a lake. All my clothes was taken off of me and I was given this gown and we were made to get in line and march down to the lake where the pastor or the preacher was already waiting in the lake. And I was baptized in the water. It scared me because I did not know he was going to duck my head in the water. <laughs> it was very scary and nobody told me what to expect. I just knew that on this day, we were going to get baptized. So, I was born into the world of Christian belief. I did not choose this. This was forced upon me as a child at birth. I had nothing to do with this. This was involuntary because I was hoping that my parents, my relatives, our friends, our neighbors was guiding this child in the right direction. And it was not their fault. They did not do it with evil intent, but it was done. So now the problem is I embrace the belief in God which I was not told it was a belief. I always thought and was taught that God was real. And some of you say that, but it's a belief system. I never heard nobody tell me that this is what we believe. This is what they told me, this is what they know. So I stood on what I was taught. And I loved the church. And I understood the teachings of Jesus Christ. And as a child, I wanted to go to heaven and I wanted to please God. However, even as a child, I always was a thinker. I always was the type of person that asked questions. Things just did not make any sense. 
I wondered and began to wonder about these teachings. Something was wrong. I did not know what was wrong. But until I began to find out, I just continued to serve my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Then one day, I had relatives who were converted to the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And they brought this teaching to us in the backwoods of Mississippi. And my mother and my relatives was not interested in the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, even till this day. However, as that curious little boy, I wanted to know more about this Islam thing. Maybe it, it has the answer to my curiosity and I began to read and study the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and those teachings gave me some of the answers that I was seeking and it gave me a knowledge and an understanding where as I was a child I could challenge any adult even adults with college degrees who was the principal of the school or the teacher in my class. This teaching was amazing. And then I wanted to join the nation as a child. Remember, I'm still a child. And as a child, as a teenager, I joined the Nation of Islam under the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the early 1980s. So brother, why do you, or why do you seem as though now you hate God and you hate the Nation of Islam and you don't like the minister anymore? Or, I mean, explain this to us. <clears throat> Do you know what I was taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught the FOI in this little booklet called <coughs> The Meaning of FOI. He told his FOI, you are not a robot. You are a thinker. You just don't uh, on the orders of your uh, commanding officer. You can question. You are a thinker. So that is what I was anyway. And so now the only thing I'm doing is acting on what Messenger Elijah Muhammad taught me as an FOI. Another thing that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught me and I, I get in trouble for acting on what Elijah Muhammad taught. Elijah Muhammad taught me to stand on real truth. I call it real truth. Because some of this stuff that y'all have out here is not real. You call it truth, but it's not real. There is nothing true about some mothership in the sky. It has been 80 years. Oh, we see the mothership all the time. So let us, for example, what if I believe in the mother AK-47 and it's in the sky. And I, be, I have been, I have seen the, the, the mother AK-47 for 80 years. But the mother AK-47 has done nothing for me. I'm still in the condition that I am. And my enemies shoot me down like a dog. So what if the mothership exists? It has done nothing for you. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught me to stand on real truth no matter what the consequence. So... That should also include to question the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. That should also mean that the same, the same way that I would question Christ, Christians or Orthodox Islam or Buddhism or any other 
belief system, or any other kind of spirituality, I should also question the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we have come a long way from the uh, time, the glory, the glory days of the nation of Islam. We have more information. There are more people who think for themselves. You cannot give that type of stuff to people no more. We are critical thinkers. We think for ourselves and we analyze and examine. Back in the day, people just, you could give them something, it sounds good, and they would just accept it. And they would question nothing and just believe it. Just like many of you do right now. Most of this stuff that y'all have don't make any sense. It's filled with error and flaw. It does not work. And you continue to try to put a round peg in a square hole that makes you insane. So no, I do not hate God because I have never met God. I've never interacted with God. I don't know what you're talking about. So how can I hate something that, has, that I don't know nothing about? I can't believe in this God. I can't disbelieve in the God because I've never interacted. I've never met the, this God. This God has no bearing on my life whatsoever. I do not hate Louis Farrakhan. I simply show error and flaw and incompetence. This is a reality that you don't want to accept. He is a relic of the past and he is a follower. He is not a leader. He tells you all the time, I am a follower. But the person that he is following is no longer here. So what is he doing? He's been doing this work since the early 1980s and he has had maybe a billion dollars passed through his hands and really has nothing to show for it and he has said this out of his mouth May 2010 in St. Louis, Missouri the speech is on YouTube I believe when he dedicated the Muhammad's Mosque number 28, May 2010, in St. Louis. So you can get angry at me. You have the problem, not me, because I'm going to stand on the truth. It's not about personality. You and I are cool, but when you begin to lie, when you tell a show an error, I'm going to stand on that unless you show me that what you stand on is correct. And I'm going to you're going to have to, it's going to really have to uh, go through the criteria of common sense, logic, reason, and so forth. It's going to have to pass that criteria. I'm not interested in what sounds good. What sounds good has not done nothing for these of whom I call the people of soul, the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin. Let me shake it off. I am still grinding my gears. This is a Realities Temple rant video. And of course, I'm that mighty one. The mighty, mighty, mighty mm. Angel Snub Nub 7. I am your brother, soul brother number one, and your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. Okay. This is a rap video. I have something else on my mind that really grinds my gears. And what really grinds my gears is the hypocrisy that I observe in religious people. You are so hypocritical. You so many of y'all so fake. 
because you really don't have understanding of what you have been taught. You really don't. You teach these things and you say that you believe them, but clearly you don't. Then you get, get upset when somebody like me reject your religious dogma. Because I see I'm observing you. You don't really, if I took most of y'all to, to a court, I could prove in a very short time that many of you really don't believe what you're talking about. You don't believe. And this is why in the Muslim book called the Holy Quran, this is why Allah tests you because you can say anything out of your mouth. But we want to see if you really are sincere by giving you a test. And really, the reason why these religious teachings and these persons have not evolved, you don't see them, you don't, they, you don't see nothing special about them except they can run their mouth and, oh Jesus, oh Allah, Allah walk by this, you know, they holler and scream and all this religious rhetoric. But you don't see nothing special about them because they think. Many of them are alcoholics, drug users. Many of the men beat women. Some of the women beat men, exploit their children, nasty attitude, talk all this love stuff. But you don't see the love, nasty mouth. They use profane language and vile and nasty and, and violent. You see this. This is not everybody, but on social media, you know I'm not lying because on social media, y'all see it all the time. Perhaps, perhaps, maybe many of you are guilty of it. And you know this is true. But here is a man. Here's a ministry. You don't see me going around with profanity cussing people out, being disrespectful. and Some people think just because you disagree with them that's being disrespectful, but that's silly. I do not approach anybody in a disrespectful manner. I'm courteous. I listen to people. And a lot of times I don't agree to disagree because a lot of times I know that's an outright lie. That's falsehood. I'm not going to agree to disagree on what I know is 1,000% false because I represent 1,000% liberation of the mind. I'm not going to attempt to make you believe I'm going to, in the future, accept your falsehood or your outright lie. I'm not going to do that. Now, see, keep this in mind as we continue this conversation. These are things that I learned in religious teaching. Most of this comes from uh, Islam. It says in the Quran. Now keep this in mind now because I'm going to go back to these to these points. It says in the Quran, Allah uses whom he pleases. Mind you, it does not say Allah uses the Muslims that he pleases. I'm going to say it again. It says Allah uses whom he pleases. It does not say Allah uses the Muslims that he pleases. So that means Allah can use anybody. Perhaps even those of whom you call devil for what he pleased to do with them. Then, of course, in Christianity, you always hear God works in mysterious ways. God works in mysterious ways. Religious people always say, God, Allah, this could be Christian or Muslim or, or anybody. They say, God knows what is best 
for you. God knows what is best better than you know what is best for you. It says in the Quran, my last point, and I'm going to go back and reference these points as we continue this conversation. It says, the Muslim always pray and ask Allah, oh Allah, to help and keep us on the right path, whatever that is. Most times the right path is, is only help me keep the faith in, in Islam or Christianity or whatever the religious teaching that I have become obsessed with, fanatical about and zealous about, loyal to. That's what it's about. But that's not what it, sh it should be about. Because if your God is about truth, if your God is about justice and freedom and equality, that's the correct path. Not something that is personal that you like. So keep me on the right path. The hypocrisy in religious prayer all over the world, in my family, in your family, your next door neighbor, countless millions and billions. But I just want to talk to us who are the descendants of slaves born in America, having dark skin, I call us the people of soul. I want to talk about us. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not really concerned with everybody else. I want to talk to us. We need to be talked to. Somebody needs to talk to us and love us, care about us to talk to us so that we can be better, so that we can reach a higher potential. That's what I'm about. I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to bring us down or degrade us or nothing like this. You have to you have to be shown the reality. If you're not making the grade, if you're not passing the test, somebody got to tell you, you're not passing the test. That's, that's wrong. But if I don't care, I just want to pass you on to the next grade. I don't care whether you learn anything or not. See, that's, that's a deceiver. That person don't have your best benefit. But you have people that want to sit down with you telling you that you're wrong. That's not going to work because they're looking out for your best interest. Although it hurts to tell you that you're wrong, although it hurts our feelings, truth hurts. It's painful. We don't like hearing the truth. If I'm an ugly person, physically, which I don't think that I'm, I'm an a ugly person, I think I'm rather handsome. <laughs> but if you say that I'm ugly, and so many people tell me that I, I can accept, man, I'm not a very nice looking person physically. I can handle that, but it hurts. It hurts. But then I can look inside myself, well, I'm not very handsome, I'm not very pretty on the outside, so I will work to be handsome and pretty coming from the inside. And so they can say, well, he's not very handsome on the outside. He's not a very handsome guy, but he has a beautiful personality. He's a very good-hearted person. So see, I can embrace truth like that, and we don't know how to do that. We get, when people bring negative things to us, and they are true, a lot of times, sometimes people just want to hurt your feelings. But I'm just saying, it's according to where this is coming from. I'm not coming from a bad place. I'm not trying to hurt our feelings. I'm not trying to degrade us. I'm not trying to put us back into a grave. I'm trying to be like the Jesus, bring us from death to life. You have become a hypocrite and you hypocrites. And you take the name of the Lord God in vain in your prayers. You pray. Oh Allah, oh Jesus, you pray. Send us a savior. Send us somebody divine to help us out of there. Send us some kind of help because we are in a rough condition here. So then Allah, so then God sends you a person like Malcolm X. That's not him. 
That's not who we're looking for. We already have the Messiah. It's Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad has the teaching. Elijah Muhammad was given a gift, but Elijah Muhammad don't have the talent in order to get the job done like it should be. So even Elijah prayed for this kind of help. And then when Allah gave the help to Elijah Muhammad, then you began to have problems with the gift. Oh Allah, send me a husband, send me a wife. And then the God who knows what is best for you, better than yourself, then the God sends you your wife and sends you your husband, but the wife is too fat. The husband ain't tall enough. The the what God sends you is what you ask for, but something is God knows. What is best for you? But the husband, I'm a Muslim, but the husband is a Christian. God works in mysterious ways. God uses whom he pleases. This Christian is a good match for this Muslim woman, and I'm bringing them together. What is that, what is that thing they always say about don't be upset what God brings together and y'all do it real quick but you pray for these things and then when the God who knows what is best for you give you your gift then you reject it you a hypocrite you a non-believer and all this the God does to keep you on the right path this may this what I'm doing for you is to keep you on the right path of freedom, justice, equality, reality, and truth. And you reject God's gift because you are really you are a liar and you're a non-believer, you're a hypocrite. Allah uses whom he pleases. It does not say again. Allah uses the Muslim, Allah uses the Christian, Allah uses the Hebrew Israelite or the Kemetic or the Nuwabian that he pleases. God uses whom he pleases. And you reject the gift because you don't really believe in what you are teaching. God knows what is best, but when God gives it to you, you reject it. But you say that God knows what is best and you say that God works in mysterious ways. That is why you reject the words and the wisdom, not bragging on myself, coming from this, this ministry, because I'm going to tell you, although I don't acknowledge God, I don't, I always say God don't exist, but I am telling you that your God has chosen me to give you a message and guide you in a certain direction. And you reject the gift because Allah whom chooses whom he pleases and I am chosen. That is why all the wisdom, all the teachings that you have can't do nothing with me. And God also gave me the articulation and everything that's needed in order to get the job done. And you reject it because it does not come in the form that you believe it should be. Although God works in mysterious ways. Mm -hmm. uh, think about it. Jot down your comments. Let's talk. Okay. Testing. One, two. Do you hear me now? Do you hear me now? Okay. This is a Realities Temple on Earth rap video. We are going to be casual. I just want, there's just something on my mind that, like Peter Griffin from Family Guy always said, grinds my gears. I have to get this off my chest. So this is a rap video. Welcome to the Realities Temple on Earth. And of course, I am your host. 
Angel Snow number seven. Okay. How do I want to kick this off? Mm -mm -mm. I first want to make something very, very, very perfectly clear. <laughs> very, very clear. <clears throat> I am not a teacher. I do not teach. What this ministry is attempting to do is cause you to think for yourself so that you can analyze information and so that you can begin to act upon your own thoughts that is within yourself. You don't need to look outside of yourself once you become an adult. Well, I'll take that back because there's always information out there and you can get it from several sources and whatever. But what I'm trying to tell you is that everything in nature, from the dog to the bee, to the flea to the skunk, you and I are born with everything that we need. None of these creatures come onto this planet they are dependent on somebody else for their survival. They are capable of functioning on their own. They don't need a holy book. They don't need a divine person to guide them. We need these things because we have been turned into slaves. And that's your problem. I don't care what race you belong to, your gender, sexual orientation, rich or poor, humanity has been conditioned to be a slave. And you can be a slave. There's all kinds of slavery. You can be a slave to cigarettes. They call it addiction. It's slavery. An alcoholic, slavery to spirits, slavery to the belief in some God, slavery to your wife or your children, anything that you put above your own life. Because a slave's life does not benefit him or herself. A slave's life benefits their masa, the cigarette companies, the companies that make alcohol or condoms. Or you want to stay in the good with your wife. So Everything that you do, you want to buy down and make sure she's happy. Some of y'all even allow your children to control you. And if that's what you're about, you don't need to come here because I am about 1,000% liberation of the mind. You are not going to be a slave to your children, your husband, your wife, another man, another woman, God or alien. It is better to be out of existence than be a slave. It is unnatural to be a slave. Domesticated to serve somebody else. This is your life. Enjoy your life. If you're dumb, so what? Then you are dumb, but you enjoy your life the best way that you can. You don't allow nobody else to control you in your ignorance. So I am here not to teach. To teach means to train. When you go to school and they're teaching you something in college, whatever, they are training you to do something. To teach means to train. To train you to do what? If I am in a religious believer, what are you being trained to do? You are being trained to believe and be loyal to some god or alien or whatever it is that they have chosen for you to become a slave to. You are trained to be a slave. And that is not what I'm about. If you want to be a slave, your best bet is to just go on. I want those who seek 1,000% liberation of the mind. Those who are self-thinkers, wish to move forward, that love their life, 
and everything they are benefits their life and their loved ones of whom they share this life with. My purpose is simply to suggest to us things that will benefit us, give us advice to us, that which benefits us. Not just to me, but we as a people, so that we can become the successful persons or group or a people that we have the potential to become. But you cannot you cannot arrive at your greatest potential as long as you have the mentality of a slave because a slave has a leash on him or her and they can only go as far as the masa allow them to go. Hmm. My topic for these few minutes is, I. this is my rant that I hear all the time and I really, something, it, Something kept bothering me about this, this statement. And finally the answer has come because I'm a self-thinker. I gave it to my brain and my brain said something is wrong with this. And now my brain has given me the answer that I was looking for. It can happen to you <laughs> when you allow yourself to think and accept the reality of the life that we have been born into. Mm. Wow. Our problem is we don't think. I want to give us something to think about it. There is no right. There is no wrong. I want to give us something to think about. That is our problem. We don't think. We allow books. Well, the Quran said this. The Bible said that. When it says this in the Torah, it says this in such and such a book. Reverend Mudflap said this. Uh, Dr. Umar said that. Louis Farrakhan, you don't think for yourself. So when you get into these debates, you are limited in what you can say because you are a slave and you're limited in only in what your masa give you. Your masa gave you a book. You can only go as far as your understanding of the book or the DVD that you just listened to. The statement that grinds my gears is I hear all the time that Elijah Muhammad, of whom I love, if, if, if Elijah Muhammad was not in my life, chances are I would not be speaking to you. And I don't, I know that Elijah Muhammad was not a perfect person. I don't view Elijah Muhammad as divine and holy and all like that. He was just a person. And I am very grateful for what he was able to accomplish. I do not support Elijah Muhammad in those things that I find in error because he taught me to support truth. He told me to become a righteous person. So if he takes actions that's contrary to that, even though he taught me these things, I cannot be loyal to you when you're wrong. And that's your problem. No matter what these people do, you justify their wrong. And that makes you unrighteous. So stop lying and talk about you are the righteous because just like Dr. King says, evil exists because good people do nothing. So I hear all the time, Elijah Muhammad made Malcolm X. Elijah Muhammad made Muhammad Ali. Elijah Muhammad made so-and-so. Well, no, that's incorrect. Elijah Muhammad influenced. Elijah Muhammad inspired. But Elijah Muhammad did not make Malcolm X. Certainly physically he did not. Or Muhammad Ali. What he did was give them something that caused them to be able to express what was already in them. If Elijah Muhammad made Malcolm X, if Elijah Muhammad made Muhammad Ali, 
then that means he gave them their talent and he did not. The talent Malcolm X had and even in his early childhood, Malcolm X wanted to be a lawyer. And when he was given these teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he expressed that talent in himself, like being a lawyer in the defense of the descendants of slaves having dark skin, born in America, and the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And he did that well, but that talent was already in him. Elijah Muhammad only gave him a vessel to express that talent. The same with Muhammad Ali. He was already Cassius Clay. He already had a big mouth. He already had all these different things. Elijah Muhammad did not give him boxing skills or, or the ability to talk. Muhammad Ali already had these things. The only thing Elijah Muhammad did was give these brothers a vessel in order to express themselves. And they began to express themselves at a very high level. The gift was already in them. So this is false that Elijah Muhammad made Malcolm X or Muhammad Ali. This is false. This is what Elijah Muhammad taught. Elijah Muhammad taught that the duty of a civilized man is to bring civilization to the uncivilized. So if Malcolm X or Muhammad Ali and many others, if they are lost, if they are deaf, dumb, and blind, the duty of a civilized man, and Elijah Muhammad is supposed to be this civilized man, then his duty, his duty and his responsibility is to bring civilization to the uncivilized, and when you do that, the talent and the gifts that is already within those people, they can express themselves. But see, when religion is involved, there's always a catch-22. Because not only, I'm not doing this out of the kindness of my heart because I'm a civilized man. The reason why I'm doing this because I want you to praise me. And that's what Elijah Muhammad and Muhammad Ali did. Oh, Elijah Muhammad this. Oh, your holy apostle. They praised Elijah Muhammad and became his slave. And when Malcolm got uppity and left the plantation, then he sent slave catchers to kill Malcolm. That's the bottom line. And when Muhammad Ali did not want to obey his masa, then just like Malcolm, he was kicked out of the, uh, off the plantation for a year because you have become a slave. I'm not going to civilize you just for your benefit. I'm going to civilize you so you can become my slave. You should want black men to stand up for themselves. You should want black men to respect our women and fight for their freedom. But there's always a catch-22. And then you make them believe you made them when you did not. The gift was already there. And you also are civilizing them for an alternative, ulterior motive. And that's deception and that's wrong. I love you, Elijah, but I cannot embrace that. So with that said, let's talk about it. Not teaching you anything. I want you to think about this. And I say, and I know that you can't refute that Elijah Muhammad or you or anybody can make another person. And if you help somebody, are you doing it out of the kindness of your heart or do you want praise or you have some arterial motive behind it? Jot down your comments. Until next time, love, peace, and so is what was the benefit that would have been brought 
or what was brought to the nation of Islam by the murder of this man who brought so much to the struggle and such a benefit. Now look at this. This is how stupid. Look, let me tell you something. You don't have to like me. You don't have to like Malcolm X. You and I, we are a people in a struggle with a vicious oppressor that controls the media, that has a powerful army, who is a giant to our David. I don't have to like you, but I understand that you are out here just like me trying to uplift, encourage, and inspire and oppress people not only to inspire them to build a business, stop killing one another, and other negative things, but also give you the uh, en encouragement, if necessary, and the option should always be on the table that we might have to declare a guerrilla war on this nation. That's just the bottom line. Y'all history buffs, there is nowhere in history that I know of where a people can be liberated from an oppressor and it was done with no violence. It is possible, but you're dealing with a people who are very violent. You are dealing with the people who enjoy murder. They enjoy it. All them movies and is, is about violence. All their television shows is about negative and nasty, foul, profane behavior. There's nothing good about this country. I understand what happened between the nation of Islam and Malcolm X. Now, mind you that the nation of Islam teaches that the black man is God. So whether you like me or not, I'm God. And if I'm God, why is it easy for you to take a gun that was manufactured by the people you call devil and shoot me in the face in front of my wife and my children. You tell me this. And yet and still you call Malcolm a hypocrite and a traitor. You became a traitor as soon as you began to plan and encourage and inspire the murder of Malcolm X. You became a traitor. You became a hypocrite to your own words when you began to think and take action on that. I just talked about Muhammad Ali and Muhammad Ali during that period of time, Malcolm was his brother and his friend. But then when he left the nation and all that happened between Malcolm X and the nation of Islam, Muhammad Ali said, and I saw this on film out of his own mouth, that Malcolm was worthy of death because he's going against the messenger of Allah. But now you see devils at Muhammad Ali's funeral, Bill Clinton, an adulterer and a fornicator, a liar, who passed legislation that brought serious harm and oppression to black people. He's given the eulogy to Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali always skinning and grinning in Caucasian people's face. But Malcolm X is the traitor. Black people buried Mah uh, Malcolm X. And it is Caucasian people giving the eulogies and will help bury Muhammad Ali. But Malcolm is the traitor and the hypocrite. Really. 
again, you don't, the nation of Islam, you did, you do not have to like Malcolm. And the only thing you had to do was leave that man alone. The only reason why he began to talk is because y'all kept messing with him and threatening him. And I believe it because it has happened to me. Threats on your life and harassment. Even to this day, this sick mentality permeates those who believe in this. Making good people into monsters. But what is the benefit? How did the nation of Islam benefit from the death of Malcolm? There was no real benefit. You just had hate in your heart. Jealousy and envy in your heart. Because you knew of Malcolm, Malcolm's potential. That's what it was. Jealousy and envy. Because if Malcolm was a nobody, if Malcolm was no threat to you, why is it necessary to kill him? But what they said, there's such thing as irony. And there's such thing as karma. Ten years later, what began to happen to the nation of Islam? The nation of Islam fell. Well, yeah, it fell. It's going to rise again. Well, here we are in 2016. And the nation of Islam has not risen close to its former glory. Nowhere close. Why is that? And it's going to continue to fall. It may not disappear. But it, it will never be what it once was. It's over. You had an opportunity to lead the people. You had the opportunity to be a good example to our people. And you failed because you were the real traitor. And you are the real hypocrite. And you murdered Malcolm. And your whole nation fell down. And all of y'all, tons of you became hypocrites and traitors. Some of y'all black Muslims are married to Caucasian women right now. I know I'm right. I don't, I don't even I can't I don't even have to name names. I already know because I know your mentality. I already know. Eat one meal a day, some of y'all 300 pounds. Explain that to me. Malcolm ate one meal a day. He didn't look like he was 300 pounds, but Chuck, but he's the hypocrite and the traitor. But Malcolm X followed the teachings 1000%. You don't even have the strength to because you ain't nothing. You're still a slave to Caucasian people and their lifestyle. So it is very ironic. You killed this man and some of you still, Malcolm was a traitor and he's a hypocrite. And look at you, confused. You don't have nothing going on. You want your little teaching to rise up again. You look so pathetic and pitiful. It will never rise again. It will never be that again. It should never have existed to begin with. In reality, it's more of a detriment than it is of a benefit. Looking for spaceships up in the sky. When these spaceships going to come save? Ah, that's what I like to know. When are they? It's been 80, 8, 0. Eight, zero, 80 years, where's this mothership? Farrakhan said, Elijah Muhammad is not dead. 1975, 2016, where, where is he? The forces of nature are working as we speak. The forces of nature have been doing this, y'all, ever since Farrakhan been talking in the 80s. The forces of nature have been doing this and that. And it's abnormal and unusual, whatever. Has the, I mean, so what? We go through some bad weather. And then it's over with, you know. I'm not impressed. Now you're confused. Y'all running around like a chicken with his head cut off. 
Because when Elijah Muhammad died, it was over. And Elijah Muhammad knew the nation of Islam was going to fall because he knew he was surrounded by a bunch of mindless robots. The only real example of the teaching and the potential of that teaching was Malcolm X. And you got angry at him and you killed him. You murdered him. You were nothing but legs and feet. When Elijah Muhammad died, that was the end of it. And so now we are in 2016, and I guarantee you, when Louis Farrakhan passed his life, or he gets so sick, he can no longer run the nation of Islam, the same, his nation of Islam, his version of the nation of Islam will fall. And all y'all who are jockstrap riders of Louis Farrakhan, Who's, who's jockey strap you going to look for then? It's not going to be nobody in the nation of Islam because you're not impressed. You, you like Nuri Muhammad, but you're not impressed by Nuri Muhammad. You might like Ishmael Muhammad, but they those guys, there is nobody in the nation of Islam that you, you, you cats are impressed with except Lewis himself. And I study and listen to the speeches of Lewis Farrakhan and he knows that you are not interested really in Nuri or Ishmael. He knows this already. He knows that it, it is his personality that keeps his nation of Islam floating. Soon as that head get cut off, there will be infighting and all of it will fall apart. That's just how it goes.